Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking our second look through the first 1000 Penguin books and this time it's going to be from number 101 up to Penguin main series number 200. So that's going to be the subject of today's video. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay then, so off we go again with uh, Penguin Main Series number 101. There we are, and this is uh, um, the second Raffles crime book. Raffles was actually a criminal, but he, uh, he sort of hung out with, um, uh, shall we say, the upper class, and then proceeded to rob them, a bit like a, um, a Victorian age Robin Hood sort of a character. Um, the books are actually excellent, so uh, I do recommend those as a, as a great fun read. Uh, 102, Youth Rides Out, Beatrice Keane Seymour, fiction title. Uh, another naval fiction book, Tall Ship by Bartimus, 103. 104 is Deep Waters, W.W. Jacobs, fiction again. 105 is Man Trap, Sinclair Lewis. Looking at the back of these here, um, you've got the books literally right up to number 105, plus a recap of the first 90, the first 10 Pelicans, and the first six Penguin Shakespeare are also on the back there. And uh, just so we've got an idea of date, these are 1937 at the moment. Um, number 106 is now East, now West. 107, this one's in a wrapper, a little, little bit of wear on that one. Um, Phyllis Bottom, Private Worlds. 108 is Kay Lung Unrolls His Mat, Ernest Bram. 109, The Fiddler, Sarah Gertrude Mullen. Biography next, um, Andre Moros, the guy who wrote um, Ariel, is, this one's on Disraeli, so this is in the blue biography jackets, bit of a dark copy of that one. Um, now an absolute, well, one of my favourite early crime novels, um, I do love Arthur Conan Doyle anyway, um, but this is a really nice edition of The Hound of the Baskervilles, the first Penguin edition of an absolute classic, as you can imagine. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, Alan Lane used to collect um, the founder of Penguin. He wanted a, a signed copy of every every Penguin in existence. And uh, when that was published, Arthur Conan Doyle had passed away. So he contacted Conan Doyle's old publisher and um, got them to snip his signature from the bottom of a letter from one of their files. And he pasted it into the copy of his copy of um, The Hound of the Baskervilles, just so he could have a set of signed ones, which I <laughs> thought was really funny. Um, Ethel Manning, which is Children of the Earth, number 112. First Travel and Adventure one today, which is The Secret of the Sahara. Kufara, Rosita Forbes. These early travel ones are really, really nice. I do absolutely love them. Um, <clears throat> 114 and 115 is one of those double ones, which is like a two-part biography. And this is Falk Man of Orleans. 116 is the start of a little run of miscellaneous titles. So this one's called On England by Earl Baldwin. This one's also in a wrapper. Just like a bit of a potpourri of subjects. This is a red, um, and this is seven famous one act plays, number 117. Um, not a lot of names I recognize in the list there. This is a book of short, short plays, one act plays. Another one in the yellow, like miscellaneous covers, and this is While Rome Burns, number 118. Listing in the first 120 there on the back, complete to the end of 1937. 
And then 119, another favourite of mine, Billiards and Snooker for Amateur Players. I used to play a lot of snooker and this book's actually fantastic and is um, sought after by uh, snooker collectors as well as uh, penguin collectors. It's actually quite hard to find in, in nice condition in a wrapper. Then we've got number 120, which is Penguin Parade Volume 1. So some series were released as part of the main series before they then eventually got their own separate series. So this is um, uh, an anthology of stories, poems by contemporary writers of the period. Um, there's a few that I recognise. There's one by H.E. Bates. Um, that's about it, to be honest. <laughs> um, but that's number 120, Penguin Parade Book 1. And this is another two-parter, which is Lean Men 1 and 2 by Rolf Bates. Not the best copies of those, but there'll be ones that eventually will get upgraded. Faulkner's Soldier's Pay, a bit of a classic, that one. Number 1, 2, 3. Crime one now, which is John Dixon Carr's It Walks by Night. Um, that's also in a wrapper, so that's quite nice, isn't it? Obviously, all these crime ones are quite expensive these days. Um, I was lucky just to start collecting these penguins when they weren't too bad, but um, I, you know, the prices of some of these now really uh, is quite eye-watering. <laughs> 125 then, An Indian Day, Edward Thompson. That's got quite a bit of foxing, hasn't it? Um, number 126, Trader Horn. Another one which I found quite difficult to find in nice condition. And some of these I've got, but they certainly um, could do with a bit of an upgrade, shall we say. Uh, 127, The Havering Plot. Another nice, really robust, cracking crime novel there. And I can understand why there are collectors who just collect the crime, because they are so nice. Um, biography now, number 128, which is uh, Lord of Arabia, H.C. Armstrong. Miscellaneous again, so this is 129 and 130, which is the weekend book, which is sort of uh, things to do at the weekend, should you have a moment to spare. <laughs> 129 and 130. 131, um, this one I find quite common. Now you should be able to pick up a copy of this, and this is a 10 minute alibi. So um, this is certainly one of the more, one of the more common crime titles of the period. So they're not all of fortune. Um, this one, once again, very, very common, Mr. Perrin and Mr. Trow. Um, Hugh Walpole, really nice, bright, bright copy of that one, considering its age. 133, Watkins' Last Expedition, illustrated. Nice travel one in its, in its wrapper. And I have to say, um, I am quite a fan of some of these early travel ones. They're great, even today. Um, Carl and Anna, 134. Seven Red Sundays, 135. Vile Bodies, Evelyn War, absolute classic. Um, and this was the first ever Penguin edition of that one. 1938 we are, that's we've moved on a year. Death at Swaling Court, J.J. Connington. By the time we finish the first thousand, we'll be on, I think it's about 1956, just to give you a little idea of how many we've got to get through. Um, certainly the war years are gonna be, there's some great stuff in there. I might even have to split those into like extra videos because there's so much to talk about. Uh, 138, which is Beverly Nichols' self. Um, now the list of every single book is now gone and it just lists some of the names that um, are published within Penguin, 138, and 139 is this one, which is a flying uh, penguin. And I believe this recounts um, uh, First World War, a First World War recollection, as I recall, um, of a guy there in the very um, birth of the uh, Royal Flying Corps. Now I'm just gonna pause there and I'm gonna make us a bit more room and then we'll be able to carry on. Okay, so here's number 140, which is Cold Comfort Farm. Certainly not the best condition copy I've got of that one, but um, I believe it's quite a, quite a scarce one, that, but certainly one I'd like to upgrade because it's a bit of a classic, isn't it? Uh, right next to one which is in beautiful condition, um, 141, I Find Four People. Uh, biography again, absolutely, uh, you could say almost, almost unread, that one. In fact, it probably is unread. Uh, 142, nice... Uh, Juicy crime one again, spider web, 
by Alice Campbell. One, four, three. Fontamara. One, four, four is 20 years are growing. More so than Sullivan. Now this is uh, another one in two volumes, so 145 and 146, else it would have made a very, very thick penguin, wouldn't it? Um, and that's the Paradigm case. Pop those back there. Man in the Red Hat, Richard Caverne. Uh, it's just an author you just don't really hear or associate with crime books anymore, but back then, um, and certainly in Penguin's early years, he had lots of books published by them. Um, the Land That God Gave Cain, number 148. And 149 is another one of those flying penguins, and this is uh, Winged Warfare. Hundred and fifty, so halfway through is the, the miracle of P Piley, Piley, J. L. Campbell. Now the next one starts a little run of ten crime books, I believe. Um, one fifty one is the Invisible Man, one of my all time favourite H. G. Wells books. Uh, that's a really nice copy there, and I have also got. Um, so that's the first edition of the, the Invisible Man, and I think this is like the first reprint. So let's just double check that. Um, yeah, so that's the first from 1938, and this one is the reprint in Dust Wrapper from 1939. But I've kept a copy, a couple of copies of that one because I just love it as one of my favorite books. And that's such, I love reading these early, um, early Penguin books, they're beautifully uh, typeset. It's one of the real attractions to them to me. They're so nice to actually physically read. Um, another absolute cracker here, Naomi Marsh's Enter a Murderer. Um, now all of these, alas, are gonna be quite pricey. They're all gonna be 20 pounds each or more, depending on if they're in a wrapper or not, and depending on, on condition. Um, Anthony Berkeley's Piccadilly Murder, House on Tollard Ridge, John Road, Murder at Chrome House, that one looks a bit worn, doesn't it? That could do with a bit of an upgrade. Number 155. Red House Mystery, A. a. Milne, um, famous of course for Winnie the Pooh, but um, he did also write the that crime novel, which got reprinted a few years back, sort of rediscovered. Um, Sax Romer, Mystery of Dr. Fu Manchu. I absolutely love the Fu Manchu books. Um, 1938, that one in a wrapper. Very, very nice, uh, very nice copy of that one. Uh, 158 is The Waxworks Murder, John Dixon Carr, and the 159, Dangerfield Talisman, J.J. Connington, and there's one more in this little run of crime, which is number 160, which is Obelisks at Sea by C. Daly King, which is brilliant, isn't it? All of those are just fantastic. A big run of crime books there. Then we're on to number 160, so North, North to the Orient, also in a, in a wrapper. This is quite nice. So on this wrapper, you see that down in the little corner there, you see that reading case label. So if you bought a penguin reading case, and um, I do have some of these, so I shall dig them out maybe for next the next video. You could trim the wrapper like that and then stick that onto the spine of it and it would make your penguin um, paperback a bit more of a permanent fixture in a hardback. Um, 162 is Osbert Sitwell, which is before the bombardment. Once again, the back's very much changed. So look, it's just got the latest uh, crime titles, the latest travel and biographies. Complete list inside. So looking inside here, yeah, we do see quite a bit in there. And, and the odd advert, which is starting to creep in. So that's interesting, isn't it? There we are. There's the list there. Obviously there's far too many books now to, to list them all on the back cover, so they have to list them as part of the book. Uh, Charlton and Autobiography. Next one's a double volume again, so 164 and 165, which is Queer Street by Edward Shanks. 166 is The Centaur, Algernon Blackwood. 167, The Unseemly Adventure, Rolf Strauss. I wonder what was unseemly about it, eh? 
House of Exile, Norwal. Travel one there. And then 169 is As We Were, E.F. Benson. Absolutely no sign of any sort of paper rationing creeping in at all just yet. Number 170, so this is the second book of uh, selected short stories. Um, a few more familiar names in there. Uh, I see John Collier, T.F. Powers, V.S. Pritchett, Lewis Golden, so some good names in there. Number 170. 171 is Peking Picnic, Ambridge. And I'm just wondering if you're watching these and you come across one that um, you need. Oh, there it is. That's what it looks like. So it does exist because some of these do, did take quite a bit of tracking down, I have to say. Uh, 172 is The Crescent Moon, Francis Brett Young. Interestingly, this is the first time I've spotted um, any mention of the Penguin specials. Now, I have covered the complete Penguin specials up until the late 60s, right from the early days. Um, and they are in a separate uh, video. Just check my Penguin playlist and you'll see those. 173, Edith Wharton, Ethan Froome. Move those over there because we are on the, the home stretch now. 174, so Kai Lung's Golden Hours. 175, Crew Train, Rose McCauley. The Grand Babylon Hotel, Arnold Bennett. 177, Ragged Banners, Ethel Manning. I believe that's quite a tough one to get as well as fiction ones go. Some of those fiction titles are much harder to get than you think sometimes. 178, Chaos Is Come Again. And I say that because Time and again, I'd be getting dealer's catalogs when I was, uh, when they used to do um, catalogs in a physical form. And um, it would be the same books that would be missing, even with, even though they weren't crime, they were the same sort of fiction titles. That's very nice. It's 179 Black Mischief, um, a nice Evelyn War again. And this one is 1938 in its wrapper. Nice vintage um, signature there. Owner's copy, can't quite decipher whose that was. Looks like so-and-so in London, 38, as in 1938, which is when that one came out. It would be lovely just to have the ability to think, who actually owned that book? What did they do? What, what was their story? It'd be amazing. 180, Tales from Chekhov. 181, An Innkeeper's Diary, John Fothergill. Night Flight. Antoine de saint exuber uh, Exury, this is another classic. Travel now, Night of the Firecrest, yet another classic. Um, a, a travel writing classic still in print today, I believe. 184 is selected short stories of Saki. Saki very much still in print and regarded as a modern, modern classic. Confessions of a Young Man, George Moore. 185, 186, Norman Collins, that's got a bit, you can see where that's been left out and it's sort of um, uh, stained. One thing you do notice, because <laughs> back in the day, it's hard to think now, but books were stored and people were smoking pipes and cigars and they had open log fires. So if you look at some of these spines here, some of them are very much, um, uh, faded and worn or yellowed and that's generally down to like smoking uh, damage uh, 187 the Egypt's gold nice copy of that one that one's got the dust wrapper flap intact inside back to a crime one we haven't seen any of them for a while so 188 is murder in the maze JJ Collington 189 but soft we are observed Hilaire Belloc we we'll publish a lot more of his uh, books later on. 190, Death of My Aunt, real nice crime title that. 191, Ordinary Families, E. Arnott Robertson. Barnum Rectory, 192. Travel again, Sledge, Martin Lindsay, nice 
wrappered copy of that particular one. In fact, it looks virtually unread. 194 is Helene, Vicky Ball. 195 is The City of Beautiful Nonsense, E. Temple Thurston. 196 is another one by A. A. Milne, the Winnie the Pooh creator. Four plays by A. A. Milne. Nice to have that one. It's in like the red. Oliver Schreiner, story of an African farm, 197. Another travel one, which is 198, Amateur Adventure. Now, I'm trying to think if this is one of the ones I read fairly recently. No, it's not the one I was thinking of, but uh, still, once again, nice copy of that one, number 198. 199 is In the Midst of Life, Ambrose Bierce. And then number 200 is Back to Methula, uh, Bernard Shaw. And um, as we go through these, you will notice that some of the anniversary editions um, are often reserved for Bernard Shaw. And this one is published in 1939. So those 200 issues covering just a couple of years in Penguin's early history. Um, so there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that second look through these very early vintage Penguin paperbacks. Now part three, which has got the uh, the start of the very scarce penguins uh, leading to the outbreak of the Second World War, that is going to be in the next video, which will be coming along in a few weeks time. Um, if you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do consider subscribing for regular vintage penguin content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.